The Kansas City Royals don't get swept by the Houston Astros winning on Saturday. Plus, is Salvador Perez heating up? What we learned this weekend from the Houston Astros series and how that can launch the Royals into hopefully a better week as they take on Toronto and Baltimore at Kauffman Stadium to conclude this long homestand. All of that and more coming up on today's Lockdown Royals podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team's every day you are locked on royals your daily kansas city royals podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Let's get it going on the Locked On Royals podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. Email the show, LockedOnRoyals at gmail.com. On today's show, we're going to dive into the weekend series that was against the Houston Astros and talk about how the week unfolds ahead as the Royals welcome in Toronto and Baltimore to finish out this lengthy homestand. On tomorrow's show, we're going to grade the entire roster. We're going to go on Baseball Reference, look down the entire roster, and give a letter grade. As school's out for summer, let's give a report card so far for this summer for the Kansas City Royals. And then, of course, Wednesday, we'll recap the games against the Blue Jays. Thursday, we'll recap the entire series and move on to previewing the Orioles series. And then on Friday, let's take a trip around baseball and see how other small market teams are doing comparatively to the Royals. Because, of course, there's this huge idea that it is impossible to win in small markets and baseball isn't designed for small market teams to win. So Friday, let's take a trip around Major League Baseball. And let's see what other small market teams are winning, if any small market teams are winning, especially compared to the Kansas City Royals. So again, on today's show, though, we're going to recap the Houston Astros. But so you don't miss any of those podcasts coming up this week that we just laid out. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere else you get your podcast from. Make sure you go check us out over there. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the very best and has you covered this year with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. But online is where the game starts. Go check them out today. I want to thank you so much for making Lockdown Royals your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you, free and available, wherever you get your podcasts from, talking Royals baseball. Your second listen, go check out the Lockdown Chiefs podcast, another podcast that is five days a week, talking all about the Kansas City Chiefs. And so they have you covered there as OTAs wrapped up and we're kind of in that middle ground waiting for the team to report to St. Joe's for training camp. So check them out uh, over there, Locked on Chiefs, for a very, very important look at what will be a very interesting and fun Chiefs season. But for the Royals, they come out of the weekend not being swept by the Astros, which given how this season has gone, is a big win. They're three and seven in their last 10 games. Kansas City is 17 and 35 overall, the worst team in baseball. But despite that, it was good to see them not being swept by Houston because I thought there was no way that the Royals would avoid a sweep against the Astros. But they did it. They won Saturday to uh, break up the losses. So again, the Royals sit 13 games back of the division, and they sit in the wild card race nine games back of a playoff spot. While, you know, the the Reds have one more win than the Royals, and the Reds, of course, are trying to lose, uh, trying to tank. We all know how frustrating that is, but got to give them credit for not getting swept, especially after Friday. So Friday's game comes, and it's Brady Singer, who had been uh, doing well this year up until that point. And he tosses five innings 
of eight hits, seven runs, three home runs allowed, four strikeouts, brings his ERA to 415, which is still one of the best on the team, but still this is kind of this first starting outing that you just uh, didn't like what you saw, right? Houston puts up 10 runs on 14 hits, and the Royals offense only musters three runs on six hits. Wood Merrifield had a multi-hit day. Uh, MJ Melendez also had a multi-hit day. But other than that, it was Benatendi that got a base knock with a run scored, and Wood Merrifield, and a, by Wood Jr., I should say, that got a hit with a run scored. And three RBIs driven in on Bobby Witt Jr.'s three run shot in the sixth inning, his seventh home run. Bobby Witt Jr. is starting to heat up again at the plate after a kind of slow start. Still only batting the 227, but whenever you actually watch him play, uh, that you can kind of look deeper than the box score and deeper than, you know, deeper than what the numbers show. And you can just tell, you know, he's showing you good signs, right? It'd be different if he was hitting 227 while looking confused or while looking overmatched or while looking overpowered. A lot of these have been tough outs. A lot of these have been just baseball happening to Bobby Witt Jr. He looks comfortable. He looks like he can battle at the big league level. So you love to see what he's doing. MJ Melendez has to be the most frustrating case for Royals fans, not because of what he's done, but because of what he represents. MJ Melendez, this young Catcher gets called up who has been propped up by your farm system. He's hitting the ground running. He's batting 270 right now, which is one of the best uh, averages on the team. He goes two for four uh, on Friday, and it continues to be a thorn in the side of Royal, Royals fans. Again, not because of MJ Melendez, but because of something else. Something we're going to get to coming up. But first, I want to say right now, my good friends over at Athletic Greens, our partners have a product that I literally use every day. I start uh, my mornings with AG1, folks, because AG1 is lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything, while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality, recovery. It supports mental clarity, alertness. It's one thing that has the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest sciences with constant product iterations and third-party testing. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes trusted by leading healthcare experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervins. Make sure you check them out today, Athletic Greens AG1. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the daily nutritional insurance again athleticgreens.com slash mlb network make sure you check it out i love ag1 use it every morning go check them out again ag1 athleticgreens.com slash mlb network we are back on the locked on royals podcast on the locked on podcast network your teams every day. We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about the listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to lockdownpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It will not take very long, and everyone who completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockdownPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you for your help. Again, we're back on Lockdown Royals on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Follow us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Subscribe for free. Every episode's totally free and available anywhere you get your podcast from. You can find me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter 
at Locked On Royals. Email the show, LockedOnRoyals at gmail.com. And I do want to tell you also, we have amazing shows all over the network. Locked On MLB for the national side of things. Locked On Prospects for the minor league side of things. Of course, we have Locked On Chiefs, as I mentioned before. But we also have every NFL team, every NBA team covered, and college teams covered as well. So whatever team you need, just look up Locked On Chiefs, Locked On Tigers for Missouri, Locked On you know, Kansas State, Kansas, everything else. Whatever team you follow, we got you covered. So make sure you check out your other favorite teams as well here on the network every single day. But why is MJ Melendez? Such a thorn in the side of Royals fans. It has nothing to do with MJ himself. What he's done at the big league level is very, very encouraging. And he's hitting 270 and he's incredible to watch. And, and I hope he's in every single lineup from now to the end of the year. Because he is one of the few players in this lineup that has a watchability factor about him. That, that makes you want to turn on the television in a dreadful season that is already lost and we're only in early June. But the reason why is a thorn in the side of Royals fans because I want to take you back to the day he got called up. The day he got called up, based on the injury to Cam Gallagher, he was struggling. He wasn't hitting well at the minor league level. He was struggling. Of course, last year he let, he let the minor leagues on fire and he was awesome. But this year, he got off to a slow start in minor league baseball. He got called up due to the injury of Cam Gallagher. And everybody, whenever they called him up, there was a section that was very excited, and I was in that section. There's also a section that said, well, he sucked in the minor leagues. And to that, I answered, well, everybody on this team sucks, so who cares? Let's just suck with a young guy instead. And MJ Melendez has hit the ground running. He And, and here's where it's throwing aside. He joined a failing lineup, right? He struggled in the minor leagues, right? So it's two things against him, quote unquote, against him. And yet still, he's now turned into one of the best hitters on this team. That's where it's so frustrating to see that he can do it. So why not call up Vinny? Why not call up Nick Prado? Why not call up one of the young guys? And the Royals answer has always been, well, you don't want to put him into a failing lineup. You put MJ Melendez in that lineup and he succeeded. Without having the track record so far this season, that Vinny has. Vinny's been an incredible player of the week every week, just an awesome hitter, blazing, you know, lighting up a minor league baseball, lighting up triple A, uh, something that Jim Melendez didn't do this year. And so not only has Vinny been awesome this year, but the excuse of not wanting to put him into a failing lineup was ridiculous whenever you've already done it before this year, number one. And number two, part of why that lineup is failing is because of the position he'd be replacing. It makes no sense. And it's frustrating to see MJ Melendez be so awesome and knowing that they're robbing us of more awesomeness. But MJ Melendez, really good Friday. They lose by a wide margin, 10 to 3 Friday. Bounce back on Saturday, though, and win 6 to nothing, which you got to give the Royals credit, though, right here. Chris Bubich gets called back up. He's looked dreadful this season. He's looked embarrassing, embarrassing this season. He has been overmatched this season. He looks like he doesn't know what he's doing this season. Gets sent down, comes back up. Got to give him credit. He pitched five scoreless innings, giving up five hits and three walks with three strikeouts against the Houston Astros. Snyder comes in, clean inning. Stamont comes in, clean inning. Barlow comes in, shuts the door. You got to give them credit for shutting out the Astros. You look up and down that Astros lineup, and you have Jose Altuve, Brantley, Bregman, Alvarez, Griel, Tucker. Jeremy Pena has been very fun to watch this season as a rookie. This rookie class has been awesome. You look up and down that Astros lineup, it's, there's no easy outs, there's no resting. You know, maybe they're eight, nine guys, you know, Siri and. Malnado, you know, maybe you can take a breath there. But everywhere else in this lineup, there's nowhere to calm down. Especially whenever you're relying on young guys like Bubich, like Snyder, right? And for them to still go seven, you know, innings of baseball, or I should say six innings of baseball for those two, of scoreless baseball is, is incredible and deserves 
a hat tip. Now, does this mean that everything is fixed and that the Royals, uh, you know, pitching staff has com- completely turned itself on its head and is and is totally better now, or has figured something out? No, it could just be one good game. But they do deserve credit for that one good game because again, it's not like you did this against the Reds lineup. You did this against a very good Astros lineup. Even a guy like Kyle Tucker who's hitting 240 this year. He started out so bad. I think it was like, what, one for 20-something he started out? But he's now drugged that average all the way back up to 247 uh, on the year total. And, you know, he's getting hot. He's staying hot, right? So, like, that, that lineup is just incredible for Houston. And they're battle-tested, and they've, and they've gone to World Series, and they've won World Series. And, you know, they, they've made deep playoff runs every year these last couple of years. So that does deserve a hat tip from Chris Boop. Chris Bubich. And from this Royals offense, you know, let's just say this Royals pitching staff that only gave up five runs, five hits. The Royals offense puts up 10 hits and produces six runs. With Merrifield, another two hit day for him. Bobby Witt Jr., another uh, hit for him, one for four, the run scored in RBI. Salvador Perez, it's a home run. He's heating up. He's got seven on, on the year at this point, and then he hits up uh, an eighth the next day to start heating up the plate. Press has been dreadful this year, and he's battling a thumb injury. He's back behind the plate in this one. Melendez playing right field goes one for three. You saw Nicky Lopez go two for three in this one. That was a really good game Saturday. That was a game that made you feel good. And when the Royals put together their countdown to the new year or Christmas or whatever time in the holiday season, they do it where they start replaying old games from the year before in a hundred loss season. It's going to be hard for them to find games to put on, but I guarantee you one of those games for the countdown thingy will be this one will be whenever you blank the Astros because of Chris Bubich and Perez, it's a home run and your offense is uh, playing at a level that it hadn't been playing yet. Coming up, Let's recap Sunday's game, but first, I want to say right now, but good friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting sports needs and stats info. Find the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship with the NBA Finals happening right now between the Celtics and the Warriors. Also, of course, you have hockey and baseball and MMA, UFC, and even football future bets. I know football is still a long ways away, about 100 days or so away. But you can still bet on who you think will win the Super Bowl, who you think will win the college football championship. You can bet on all that stuff right now if you have a good feeling about it. So go right now to their website or use your mobile device and type in Bet Online. This is how easy it is, folks. I'm going to do it right now in real time. It's up in betonline.net. You go to sports, and then it'll pop up. And let's go to today's baseball games. We've got no line yet for the Royals game, but we do have a line for the – oh, here it is. The Royals game actually does have a line. Royals are one and a half run underdogs against Toronto at home. It's Daniel Lynch against Ross Stripling. You know what? Let's bet on the Royals. Let's bet on the Royals uh, plus one and a half. I've got Kansas City in this one. Who do you got? Let me know in the comment section down below uh, or on Twitter and go check out Bet Online for all of your betting needs. Check them out today. Bet Online. It's where you want to be to bet on sports and bet on baseball. Make sure you check them out. We are back on the Locked On Royals podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Royals. Email the show, LockedOnRoyals at gmail.com. Thank you for making Locked On Royals your first lesson every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Royals baseball. And let's continue talking about the Houston Astros game and the series finale, which ended with the Royals losing 7-4 to four as Houston gets 12 uh, hits on seven runs. This game was close, and then, wouldn't you know it, a late game unraveling in the ninth kind of blew it out of the water as the Royals let up three runs in the ninth in this one. You had John Hazley on the bump, six innings, seven runs, uh, six innings, seven hits, three runs, two walks, five strikeouts. I'll take that from what's supposed to be your fourth, fifth guy. I'll take that all day. 
for Kansas City, especially against a very potent offense, like we mentioned before. And then you don't give up another run uh, until the, what, seventh or, or uh, yeah, eighth, or I should say. Um, you, you'll take that all day for Kansas City. Snyder comes in, though, and they went back to that Snyder well. Terrible. I mean, three runs given up in this one. And then Abreu comes in, uh, and he let in some of those runs, of course, because they were you know, they were charged to Snyder. But, uh, of course, they were, they were happening on Abreu's watch. They got over the weekend in a swap with Texas. Um, tough. It's just tough. I mean, you're not going to keep this Astros offense quiet for long. They scored 17 runs in one weekend, and you blanked them on one day. That's pretty tough to do. Um, as far as the offense goes, again, Soto Perez heating up, going two for three with a home run. That was great to see. He had a home run and a double in this one. Um, for him, heating up would be huge for the Royals offense. Melendez got another base knock. Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, lost his hitting streak, so to say. He went over three with two runs scored because he got on base via the walk twice and did have one strikeout. Other than that, though, nothing noteworthy in terms of the offense for Kansas City. And then there was that, that fireworks show between uh, Michael A. Taylor and Presley of Houston, Ryan Presley. Well, look, that was more so of an up show. I think that Michael A. Taylor's kind of disdain was not necessarily at Presley, but at the umps making a big deal out of it. It was obvious that Ryan Presley was not throwing it. You know, Michael A. Taylor or the Royals, whenever they were up seven to whatever against the worst team in baseball, and um, they were just trying to get out of there, out of Kansas City. So I, I think that that was kind of a non-story, but it's just kind of where we're at in baseball with umpires of just them not knowing what they're actually doing. So how do you feel after this weekend of Royals baseball? What are you looking forward to about the Blue Jays series? Let us know on Twitter at Lockdown Royals or in the comment section down below on YouTube. Until tomorrow, whenever we grade every single player on this roster, be good and be good to one another.